You ready? <laughs> yeah. I'm ready for real this time. I am too. What? I am too. I'm one. Welcome <laughs> to Bad <laughs> Movie Bros. <laughs> Hi, I'm Trevor. And I'm Braden. Since the beginning of our friendship, we have bonded over a love of bad movies. And now we're on a mission to endure every bad movie known to man. It's going to be like so fun. It's going to be crazy, (laughs) bro. (laughs) Cue music. Bad movie bros, bad movie bros. If it's real good, it's not on this show. It's the bad movie bros. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Can you sniff <laughs> right as we're starting the podcast, please? And welcome to another episode of your favorite gendered movie podcast. I think bad movie bro is a genderless term, right? I mean, in like the eyes of a frat bro, maybe. I guess the <laughs> term itself. Like if you're a frat bro, you're like, yo, what up, bro, no matter who it is. Hey, Brayden. Hey, Twever. What are we watching this week? We're watching Mac and Me, buddy. Woo! Mac Woo! and Me! Mac and Me. Mac and Me, the, cla- the classic 80s film about a boy and his little alien friend. Not that one. The other one. <laughs> you know, the lesser known. It's the, the middle child of E.T. bootlegs, you know? It, it has a cult following, right? Oh, yeah. Big time. The way that we found this movie was kind of classic in our lives because we used to go to this DVD store at the local mall, as kids do. Yeah. And we would scout out bad movies. And we, our first one that we ever found there was Mannequin 2 on the move, as, mm-hmm. as, which we should cover very soon. We will. Directed by Stuart Raffle, the classic director. Can't forget Stu. And the next time that we went to that store, uh, the clerk, they were like, have you guys seen Mac and Me? And we yeah, went, it was what? really, really suspicious because he like pulled us into the back and he was like wearing a trench coat. <laughs> and he's just like, hey, you kids ever seen some? <laughs> I think it was Stuart Raffle. I think it yeah, might have been it was him. him. He was just trying to this sell old British some guy. copies. Have you guys seen Mac and Me? You kids seen Mac and Me? <laughs> no. <laughs> this was uh, competing to be the better et which um <laughs> which i think it succeeded at personally because oh, yeah. did et have any coca-cola i think not did it have a mcdonald's <laughs> breakdance scene <laughs> i don't know every time i watch et you know once a week every time i watch et i'm thinking where is the mcdonald's and i realize i've put on the wrong movie <laughs> when i hunker down at my shrine of et i just <laughs> sit there and i wonder why couldn't it have been Mac? <laughs> <laughs> Mac was really sold short. That's all I've got to say. And he is short. Yeah. Short guy. Yeah. For those who don't know, the context of this movie is that in the 80s, E.T. was flying off the shelves. It was going crazy. Kids loved that little alien. Oh, yeah. And you know what else they loved, Braden? What, Trevor? Some Mickey D's, baby. Yeah, Some Mickey Coca-Cola. D's. They love their soda. Every store you went into, it was just Ronald McDonald and his alien buddy E.T. And some genius thought, you know what would do really well in the theater? A little bit of both. I think I read that Stuart Raffle, the legend behind Mannequin 2, came onto production and everything was ready to go and set, but they didn't have a script. So he had to write the movie like the night before. He'd be writing the scenes they were about to shoot. Like a rushed college student. So the movie kind of pieced itself together like a jigsaw. (laughs) And you can't tell. No, of course not. Why would it's on our podcast? Why would it be rushed, Trevor? (laughs) True. Let's try our best to even to go through what we just watched. Yeah, let's dissect. I, I should say this is one of my favorite movies of all time. Can I say that? Yeah, you can say that. I mean, it, it's going to show a bit of bias, but, you know, in the end results, I think we can overlook it because it holds a place in my heart. I'm not going to say I love it. I'm not going to say I hate it. I'm going to say it's a neutral party for me right now. <gasps> really? Right now. Maybe by the end of this podcast, I might change my mind. Who knows? All right. Because to me, it's like truly one of the it's one of the most fascinating things to ever grace the cinema screen. Oh, it's a shining star. Like, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know if it's for me. I feel like if I was heavily inebri- inebriated 
this I would literally be like cheering along mm. at every single 80s song that comes on. One that's popping out in my head is like when one scene in the movie has uh, Mac, the mysterious alien creature, going down, bombing down a hill on like an RC car. And he's getting chased by all these dogs. And then he like soars into a tree. And it's just a shot of him hanging off of the tree with dogs surrounding him. And just like (laughs) sad 80s music comes on. That's my favorite moment in the movie. Oh, yeah. I don't think it gets enough love. Is literally an intense car chase scene with these dogs. (laughs) And then Mac is in a tree with the dogs barking. And it goes... As the dogs are barking, like, and, like, and it goes, tired of feeling all by myself. Feeling so different oh. from everyone else. And it's a classic moment. I that's the theme song of the movie, by the way. Oh, <laughs> that's, was it? Like that's an original, I think. It's either an original mm-hmm. or it's a cover, but it's the theme song of the movie I found out today. Damn. Well, you learn something new every day. Yeah. Well, it's the only moment. I, it's the only montage I can think of that isn't break break dancing in the McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great moment. It's a great moment for your original song. It's it's like how in Space Jam at the climax of the movie, they're like, Space Jam, you know? Yeah. It's just like that, except they decided to put it in the moment where the alien is stuck in a tree. Mm-hmm. It had to be intentional. There's no way that an editor did that unironically. Like, I, it was the 80s. We weren't even alive then. We don't know what these people were thinking besides give me money. <laughs> True. But I, I got to say before we move on, we got to talk about the music. Oh, my God. The music in this movie, Incredible. by far the creme de la crop of Incredible. this whole Incredible. It's like too good for the movie in so many different moments. I was realizing this upon rewatch is there are so many moments in this movie where nothing is happening on the screen or in the story, (laughs) but the music is like, (laughs) and it's like, we're watching an alien sleep in a car. Like, why is this so exciting? They didn't pay Alan Silvestri enough. That's who did it. Yeah. Alan Silvestri. Big name. The legend behind and this Forrest is already Gump, after he like, had done Back to the Future. Oh, that's right. He did that. Oh, he my God. He composed Back to the Future and then decided to do Mac and Me, I guess. It's got that 80s, like, summer blockbuster, whimsical, like, mm-hmm. I don't know how else to describe it. Like, it's just so much fun to your ears. And then your eyes are just <laughs> mortified at the <laughs> alien monsters that they try to portray as, like, a kind little family <laughs> that <laughs> was abducted so... by humanity you know yeah it's so bizarre like it's such a dis that's the biggest disconnect in the movie i think mm-hmm. other than the product placement i mean that to me is, oh, God. is hard to swallow but i love it it's why i love it yeah but especially the music is just it's so good. It's so unironically good that it feels like they stole it from another movie or something. Yeah, it was like like Back to the Future. It felt like it was just taken straight from that and then just jammed into this shit sandwich. You know what? I have a theory. I have a theory that Alan Silvestri was originally supposed to compose E.T. Mm. And, then, and then they decided last second to go with someone else. And then when Mac and me came along, he was like, well, I've got all this and then just gave it to them. That's my theory. Yeah. Because <laughs> it, it sounds like it's E.T. the whole time. Yeah. I mean, they, they knew what they were doing. They were like, you know, we just had this one huge blockbuster that literally, I mean. It was an instant classic. Yeah, sure. yeah, instant classic. That's the word I was looking for. Like, it was immortalized as one of the, like, good 80s movies that, like, kids growing up then will look back on and be like, oh, my God, that's my childhood right there. This... This movie is uh, not quite that. Like, it it would definitely leave (laughs) memories. That's for sure. It left me with memories. And I was like, what, 16 when I saw it? And I will never forget a single moment. Me either. No. Well, you know what, Brayden? Let's make, like, Eric and his wheelchair falling down the cliff and and dive into this story. (laughs) 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 Oh, I've been holding on to that for three days. So the story, Mac, the mysterious alien creature, is chilling on Wait, his Wait, is home. that why he's called that? Yeah, you didn't? 
I thought it was after the Big Mac. I really thought he was named after the Big Mac. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, McDonald's that's... movie. Like you're like not when wrong. the movie came out, it was literally like Ronald McDonald being like, "Hey kids, there's a new movie out called Mac and Me." Like that was the commercial for the movie. I can see that working with their brand deal like a lot. Mm -hmm. but i know the explanation they give is like oh it's an acronym like mysterious alien creature i think they say it in the beginning and i I I didn't even catch that wow okay mac and his family i guess they're all mac because aliens. no oh yeah i guess they are like the kid calls mac mac but my heart didn't like that you hear the way i just went no because mac (laughs) to me is the one with mac to me is the little baby one well not the babe there's a lot of them well it's like if there was a family of aliens and et would you call them all ET? Yes, because they're all extraterrestrial. But that's the thing. That's the thing that's different. People, these haters are out here. They're like, "This is just ET." But the thing is, ET didn't have distinct family members. Yeah, so I think they're pretty different. This is a, this is a strange point. Was I haven't watched ET in forever? But was the family in ET divorced? <laughs> no, just because just because That's there's how ET no ET starts is just like papers arriving <laughs> at the <laughs> other side of the spaceship. No. No, 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 no. I the only reason I asked that is because there's no father figure present in this movie. So like What? It's not important to the plot. I I'm just wondering. I like it <laughs> popped into my head. Okay? About, bro? I just want to know if the kid from ET is fatherless. <laughs> Uh, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah, I thought you meant the aliens. I thought you meant ET's family. Anyway, so <laughs> Mac and his family are introduced to humanity by this like a lander that lands on their planet and is collecting like samples, and then they get sucked into it, dragged mm-hmm. back to Earth. There's one line in the very beginning. I have to mention this, otherwise it won't make sense. There's one line that is spoken by one of the scientists back on Earth, and it's do you see any little green monsters in there? And it's just said so fast that it made me like lose my shit laughing. It's literally like that is said. And then a beat later, all hell breaks loose. Like there's smoke, the aliens burst out and they're like, Oh my God. But it's just, you see any little green aliens in there? Jokingly. Um, But yeah, so they escape from the scientists somehow. Mac gets into the car of the family. Eric and the fam. And can I just say that there is a (laughs) brutal, insane car stunt for no explicable reason before he jumps. Like he lands on the road, gets just packed by cars and then causes a a pile up. Some car swerves and yeah, the cars just pile up. And I'm thinking, why did this happen? Like what? it's exciting. Like, I'll give it like that. A pileup isn't doing it justice. There's literally a car that drives over another car and then <laughs> flips and like explodes. I'm not sure. You know, but I have to hand it to them. That's one of the only times in the movie that the music really matches what's going on because it is exciting. Yeah, they really have a Fast and the Furious moment, and then it, and then it's back to then you got it's a little bit of each the, franchise even before they were actual franchises. Absolutely. Now you know what? I'm going to go as far as to say Fast and Furious copied Mac and me. Like, <laughs> yeah this movie was the blueprint for so many different movies and it never gets the credit and that stops now <laughs> so that happens they go to their new home because they're moving uh and then mac like starts to like fuck with them and he's like putting shit in their house and like redecorating putting holes through the walls and the kid <laughs> In the As wheelchair, the aliens do. dude. This okay. This made no sense to me. The mom just being like pissed at the kid in the wheelchair for <laughs> completely redecorating their entire house. <laughs> I know. With why does she blame outside. him? Yeah. And then eventually, Eric finds out about Mac. The older brother also finds out their neighbor, who just so happens to be a girl of the same age, plus an older sister of the same age as the older brother. And they say a line, they say a line in this movie that I was watching with my friend Emma and she actually pointed out a joke that I never understood. And it's that um, when the brother meets the older sister, he goes, oh, you work at McDonald's. And then the little sister goes, yeah, why don't you come down and buy a Big Mac or something like that? And I always just thought, what a weird insult. But Emma said, no, in the 80s, like macking, was like making out 
So it actually oh, kind of makes sense. I didn't even think about I that. I mean, it's still product placement, but it's a it's yeah. a clever one. I'll give it that. It's a clever one. Shout out to Emma for that one. And then they go to a birthday party at McDonald's. Oh, I can't forget that. <laughs> yeah. Literally and, the integral plot point. <laughs> and he disguises Mac as a teddy bear, which confused me how fast Eric was able to like take the stuffing out of his teddy bear <laughs> and wrap it around the alien. Discreetly. My favorite thing is that this alien is, and I love him, but one of the ugliest puppets I've ever seen in my entire life only makes one facial expression through the whole movie. But whenever mm. they're showing the full body of Mac, it's clearly a child in an alien suit. Mm -hmm. And so once Mac becomes the teddy bear, it's kind of just a kid in a teddy bear suit. And <sighs> there's no distinctive features to even pin that to Mac because suddenly he's moving very smooth and like crawling yeah. around. He breaks out. So they get to McDonald's. People are break dancing as as they do in the 80s. Casually. And then they go in and it's lit in there. Yeah. It's a wild party. Everyone breaks it down. Yeah, it was popping off before they even got there. Like out in the parking lot, there were people <laughs> breaking it down. They go inside and people are like losing it. They're like, woo, snap. Apparently man. Jennifer Aniston was an extra in that scene, by the way. And that was her feature film debut. I feel like we mentioned that years ago, but it's just gone unnoticed by me. I, I can't forget. I just can't. Um, Jennifer wow. Aniston is there. Humble beginnings. They break it the heck down. Uh, Mac is like doing, you can't see me, but I'm doing sweet moves. Mac is yeah. doing sweet moves. Busting it. Busting out on the counter. Yeah. And then these high school jocks come in and they start breaking it down in sync. Like they've yeah. practiced this. I, I want to know their story. Why are they showing up to a kid's party at McDonald's and breaking it down like that? What is, <laughs> what is their agenda? What's going on? How long did they rehearse? This is just like intersectionality realized. Like it's just everybody's coming together to fucking put in work at this McDonald's <laughs> dining room. Like they're just woo the whole Man. time you got the 80s bops going you're like woo man is that what mcdonald's was like in the 80s <laughs> oh i'd like to picture it ronald mcdonald was there as they say in the credits as himself ronald mcdonald <laughs> did appear as himself in this movie Sh sorry to the actor who actually played ronald mcdonald in this because <laughs> he didn't get a credit he's ronald now um and oh, he's having God, fun yeah. at the party everybody's having a good time until mm -hmm. the government shows up <laughs> Always the worst case scenario. Immediate <laughs> switch. Because they're looking at this teddy bear on the counter and they're thinking, that, that's that got some alien qualities up there, that little teddy bear kid. And they're right. You know, that teddy bear moving like a human, definitely an alien. That's got to be Mac. It's got to yeah. be Mac. Yeah, then they, they pretty much get chased out. Insane wheelchair chase, by the way. Oh, Insane. yeah. Right. It it's goes on wheelchair. forever. It's exciting. That's the other moment. It's very exciting. The car, all of the car stunts in this movie, shout out to the car stunt team because they really, they did the work. The car stunts, the music, everything. I do love the moments where you can tell that it's, that it's a mannequin. <laughs> He's showing his mannequin roots that will later be displayed in Mannequin 2 whenever they're showing the back of Eric in that scene because it's clearly <laughs> a mannequin in a wheelchair just just whipping, whipping around. around yeah it's wild i love it so after that moment they're kind of like trying to find mac's family still yes well the thing that that mac and his kind can do is put their weird faces in the air and put their hands to their mouth <laughs> and go like it's like the easy weird home. whistly tone yeah they do it for so long every time and then that ends up being how mac finds his family is he's mm -hmm. he's like echolocation he's out the sunroof just going <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then he eventually finds them god bless him so their kind lives off of uh, in the very beginning it's shown as like they stick a straw into their planet and then they just start drinking <laughs> the juice uh on earth they just drink coca-cola they love coca-cola and and the audience can't see but i'm actually wearing my coca-cola hat today mm -hmm. in celebration yeah. of the film oh yeah it's cute so basically they get to the mine where they come across the entire family like lying on the ground essentially dead they kind of look dead yeah they're a yeah, little no, they're really <laughs> dead in there i think it's implied <laughs> that they were like actually dead for a moment 
until it, the Coca Cola that they pump into their mouths like revives them, brings Coca-Cola them back. Coca Cola saves grave. lives, guys. Alien lives, even. And then <laughs> after that, they decide like, what what should we do? Like, we don't have a way of sending this family back. So they have a gun shootout. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> outside of a gas station. They they well they take them to a gas station and i think the the family of aliens wanders into a grocery store (laughs) and they're like they are freakish like we didn't sell it enough like these aliens are disturbing (laughs) (laughs) they move in such suspicious ways with their bodies that i don't even know how they train the actors to move like that i don't think my three years at an acting conservatory, I don't think I could do what those alien actors had to had to do in this film. It's some it's some groundbreaking physical work. I'll tell you that much because I forget their people. I really yeah. do. Well, I mean, it's like they put so much into the costume. Like it's just latex layer after latex layer. <laughs> so everybody's just like, whoa, what the hell? You can't do that. And they're like knocking stuff over. And then <laughs> eventually security guard comes out and he's like, hey, you guys freeze get on the ground and then he's like if you don't stop we'll be calling the police and then they do <laughs> and stop what by the way stop being an alien <laughs> <laughs> stop being an alien in a grocery i store. love that their reaction to aliens is like can you stop yeah. just stop <laughs> what is this the police have the entire grocery store surrounded they have like a full line of cars they got guns drawn it's a dark moment for this entire movie. <laughs> it comes a little out of nowhere, for sure. There's not even any Coca-Cola. Like, what's going on? I mean, when I was watching, I was, like, half expecting one of them to drop a can of Coke and just gunshots <laughs> to start ringing out. Yeah, so all these guns are going off. Eric is, like, rolling over to try and help the aliens. He's trying to help the aliens, but he is standing in front of the grocery store, which ends up exploding for no explicable reason and kills question mark Eric for a moment. Actually it does. It kills him. The the lead character dies. Yeah. In my notes, (laughs) I literally say earlier in the movie, like the, when he falls off the cliff, Eric fucking dies jokingly. And then I forgot, Oh my God, he actually fucking dies. (laughs) It was a bold move. Yeah. But don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. Because, Luckily, one of the many skills of these mysterious alien creatures is playing the role of God, and they save Eric, and because of their heroic duty in saving Eric, Mm -hmm. they are welcomed as (laughs) U.S. citizens. Citizens of the United States. The end of the movie is them driving away in like a Cadillac with the top down, the dad aliens driving like who the fuck let him drive. (laughs) One thing that I just thought about that I didn't actually realize. So the aliens in the cave, the mine, they're like dead, but it's kind of implied that like, Oh, they're just like malnourished as hell. How could Mac revive a human being, but not, well, I mean, he can revive televisions and race cars that don't have batteries in them. Right. He's got like some sort of bioelectricity. <laughs> I think we're putting more thought into it than Stuart Raffle did. No offense, Stuart, if you're listening. I am a big fan. <laughs> Stu, if you ever want to do a Mac and Me sequel, <laughs> <coughs> Trevor will star. <laughs> I will just write. That's Mac and Me, baby. It's a celebration of McDonald's, Coca-Cola, and alien family movies. Mm-hmm. And the 80s. And the 80s. And breakdancing. And Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. It celebrates a lot. Briefly. Oh, and it ends, um, Mac is blowing bubble gum, and it ends with a giant cartoon. You may have been onto something, Brayden, because it ends with a giant mm-hmm. cartoon bubble gum that says, we'll be back. Almost like a threat. We'll be back. <laughs> they never did return, so I'm still waiting, but yeah, I, believe on it. I believe one day we'll get the sequel. Oh, I know we will. I'll I'll crowdfund it. Like I'll get a Kickstarter going or something. I would can... say let's get McDonald's to fund it. But I was reading today that when Disney heard that Mac and Me was doing this movie tie-in thing for McDonald's, they jumped on the bandwagon, and that was the beginning of movie toys based on Disney movies at McDonald's. Oh. And so because of that, even McDonald's wasn't heavily promoting 
this film. They kind of abandoned their own project by the end of it, <laughs> but they still had to make it. Yeah. So I don't know if we can reach out to McDonald's anymore. And without McDonald's, what is Mac and Me? Really? Yeah. What is I it? mean, we're going to have to rename them. Brayden. Yeah. How many Coca-Cola cans out of 10 would you rate this movie? I at first was going to give it like a good six or a seven. I think I might have to bump it up to an eight because there's something about these bad movies, man. That Like there's an enjoyable factor to watching them knowing they're bad. You know, mm-hmm. like you go into it and you're like almost giddy to see how bad it could be. There's a few that we've seen that are just like blatantly unbearable to watch this isn't one of them oh i recommend this to everyone yeah I really honestly do. i would put this on for like my kids just to be like you know mindless fun i mean it, it will convince them that coca-cola can save lives though we do have to consider that oh yeah i would it will I, brainwash children if my kids are smart all and i put this on for them I would hope that they ask me so many questions about it. I love that dads always have movies that they want to show their kids. Like for mine, it was the Godfather movies. I was way too young to want to watch those. Parents made you watch the Godfather? (laughs) My dad did. And I love that you as a dad are going to force your children to watch Mac and me. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's better than the Godfather. Oh my God, dude. Are you okay? (laughs) Dad, why is there a severed horse head in there? (laughs) So I think out of an honest 10, I would give it either a seven and a half or an eight. Okay. Just just because I enjoyed watching it. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's a good movie in any means. It made me laugh a lot Mm -hmm. for reasons that it might not have been intending to. But that being said, good, bad movie, you know? Brilliant. Uh, What would you rate it? 10 out of 10 Coca-Cola cans. I love this movie. It's one of my favorites. I don't think it can get any more perfect. I would make anyone watch this. It's art. 10 out of 10. I genuinely enjoy it a bit more than E.T. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Spielberg. Okay. Well, that's, you know, that's a, a good rating. I just realized I drank some Coca-Cola before recording this, by the way, and that wasn't <sighs> even intentional. But maybe it was the movie, you know, because it, it does a good job at its mission, which is to make us buy some Mickey D's and Coke. Yeah. I mean, I was going to hit Mickey D's on the way home because I knew we were doing this tonight, (laughs) but I didn't because I like feeling okay. Um, Oh, well, there goes the McDonald's sponsor. (laughs) Damn it, we just lost our only sponsor that we haven't gotten yet. (sighs) In conclusion, Mac and Me is a brilliant film. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, rush to it. Rush to it. (laughs) Don't walk, run. Well, thanks for joining us, peeps on another edition of Bad Movie Bros. And if anyone listening has ideas for us, um, please feel free to hit us up. You can follow us at Bad Movie Bros on Instagram and Twitter. Brand deals, baby. We're like Mac and me out here. Hey, why don't you go buy yourself a Big Mac? Hey, man. I might. (laughs) (laughs) It's the Bad Movie Bros.